But how does a language model work? In this video, I'll go through the fundamentals of text generation. Along the way, we'll learn what hallucinations are. In the last video, I explained language models are designed to do one thing and one thing only. For some sequence of words, what is the probability of that sequence appearing in nature? Language models are designed to produce this probability. Now, you might think that this probability on its own, just a percentage, isn't very interesting, but there's a lot you can do with it. For example, United States of America is a very common sequence of words, United States of America. It's more common than United States of Pizza or United States of Canada. And in understanding that United States of America is more common than pizza or Canada, we're implicitly saying that America is more likely to follow United States of than pizza or Canada is. Now, this means that you can use language models to give you the next most likely word. For example, if you were to give a language model the words United States of, it might say that it's 60% probable that America would follow. And then perhaps it might say that it's 15% likely for Mexico to follow, and then some infinitesimal value for Canada or pizza. So given that it's say 60% likely that America would follow, let's pick that word. Now we have the string United States of America. Now we can give the language model the string back and see what it thinks is again, most likely to follow. United States of America is, or the, or whatever word. And so we pick that word. And we pre repeat this process over and over and over again. Language models like ChatGPT or Bard or an, uh, Anthropics Claude are always predicting the next word. We just ask them what word is likely to follow. So quickly, it looks like the model is writing. When you ask ChatGPT a question, you'll find that it produces word by word by word by word. This is because we're continually at giving a language model that string of text that ChatGPT has already produced. We give it the ChatGPT, it produces the next word, and we repeat and repeat and repeat. And if you make the model that produces this word after word after word big enough, that is to say, if you give it enough computational power, enough artificial neurons, and you give it enough examples of words drawn from the internet, it turns out that the words it picks become informed by logic and knowledge of the world. It becomes a world model, so to speak. Its predictions become so good, the model even appears to become intelligent. But it's important to remember that even if the model seems like it could do math and write essays and all that other good stuff, what it actually is doing underneath the hood always remains the same. It's always predicting the next most likely word. But sometimes the model is unsure what word should come next. So it confabulates, it stretches its knowledge. It suddenly does what we might call a hallucination. It slips. Hallucinations are when the model appears to lie or produce false information. Examples of hallucinations have appeared in the news. For example, a lawyer a few months ago preparing for a lawsuit asked ChatGPT for relevant precedents. ChatGPT appeared to comply. It produced a list of valid cases. But when the judge reviewed the precedents, the judge found that the cases were all made up. ChatGPT had lied. But it's important to remember language models do not necessarily lie. It's important to remember they are not conscious. It does not have intention. The model is only ever trying to realistically continue the sequence you give it. So hallucinations are not malicious, but it's unlikely that they'll ever be solved. And they are certainly a problem. The model can't ever know everything about the world, but it'll always do its best to continue the sequence that you give it. Humans, of course, do the same. Have you ever stretched the truth and knowledge domains you feel less confident about? But in situations where truthful information matters, hallucinations are definitely problematic. If you're generating an article, for example, containing information you know people will depend on, can you really trust the language model to do your copywriting for you? It's important to be aware of hallucinations when considering ChatGPT in your newsroom. Hallucinations, to repeat, are not malicious, but language models are not perfect. We're slowly figuring out that there are circumstances where we can get the language model to hallucinate less. And this is including a technology called retrieval augmented generation. You should look into it if you're seriously considering using ChatGPT in your newsroom. Retrieval augmented generation involves having the language model do research before writing an article. It's a bit like having the model act like a journalist. The model has a data set. For example, it might be the archives of your newsroom. 
When given a certain topic, it will go through all the articles and all the vetted, truthful information that exists in your archives, and it will pull relevant pieces of information and produce an article that is less likely to have been produced by hallucination. Retrieval augmented generation and other similar technologies like Langchain and Agents ensure that your model is less likely to lie to you.